everyone welcome back and in this episode we're gonna try to solve the problem of having to specify scripts in each individual html file we're gonna do this using webpack so webpack out of the box doesn't support this uh, but there's a plugin called html webpack plugin and this plugin allows us to inject uh, basically specify some options of how we want to inject scripts into which files so Let's go ahead into our console and let's type in npm install flag d and html webpack plugin. Okay, now that that's done, let's take a look at our package.json and here is the plugin that we want. So let's copy this name and let's go at the top of our let me close the terminal let's go to the top of our config file and we want to import this plugin so we go ahead and type in const html webpack plugin and we require this webpack plugin and there we go now we're gonna start slowly and uh, later on we'll convert into basically thing, making this a little bit more automated. So don't worry if this uh, seems a little bit uh, troublesome to do. So what we want to do is specify a property plugins. And this is an array. And in this array, we want to do new HTML Webpack plugin and call it as an object. And then here we want to specify some options. And the first option we want to specify is the template. So let's say template. And let's point it to our SRC. And let's do index.html. Next thing we want to do is we want to specify the file name that we're going to output, right? So file name. And let's output it to pages slash index.html by default it will sort of uh, go into this dist folder here so it's going to end up in dist pages slash index.html all right and next we want to specify chunks so chunks are the actual uh, which actual sort of bundles or chunk uh, which actual chunks of JavaScript do we want to inject into here? So we have a chunk called index and another chunk we have is called vendor. So vendor is the shared one and index is the file, uh, the chunk that's inside the, the HTML. So, or rather that we use for this HTML. So let's say index and let's say vendor. Okay. And next, we want to specify inject true. So we're injecting here. Okay. Let's delete the disk folder. And let's do npm run build. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got. And you see, we got this pages folder now. And inside this pages folder, we have our HTML file. And you can see that we haven't removed these two scripts, but it's still injecting these scripts here with the correct pathing. So we're inside pages, two dots to exit the folder pages. And now we're inside the dist folder and slash JS slash vendor. So that's the vendor. And the next one should be about the same, but it will go into index and take the index.js. All right. So it seems pretty straightforward. And now if we let me bring this up. Fill in Explorer. Let's go into Dist Pages. And I will just open this in the browser. And here it is. So, Dist Pages Index, it's working. All right. Now, let's quickly go into our index HTML. Let's remove these scripts since we know we no longer need them. And let's do the same for the About page. Okay, let's go into Webpack. Let's put a comma here and let's do the same for the about page. 
So everywhere that we have about, we want to replace this. And cool. So we got that. Let's remove the... Uh, so quickly, if we try to go to the about page here, it's not going to find it, right? Because we are in the disk slash pages directory and there is no about page here. So let's delete this. And let's again, let's, let's run npm run build. Cool. Let's have this pages. We have both of our HTML pages. Close this and we can see that it's injecting the scripts here. Let's go ahead and actually back out here. So we have index and if we go to the about page, we're navigating and everything's working. Let's take a look at what we get in our network. And you can see that we have successfully split a vendor JS and index JS. And if vendor JS would be cached and we're only, so the first visit to, is to the index page, we retrieve the vendor JS file and we retrieve the index JS file vendor and they're, they're both cached. And if we're gonna go to the about page, the vendor JS file is already cached and we no longer need to fetch it from the server. We only need to fetch ab about.js. So if you have multiple pages and you have a lot of scripts, you can sort of split up your development environment, right? And say all the JavaScripts are there and inside those JavaScript files, we can basically say, right, we're using view in this JS file and we don't have to sort of specify what JavaScript we're using inside our HTML pages, okay? So all JavaScript related um, ecosystem lives in the JS folder and in the, inside the JavaScript files, and they don't mix with your index, uh, in, in, with your HTML files, all right? So this is how we separate HTML and JavaScript using Webpack, okay? So before uh, ending, oh, before ending this episode, let's actually try to fix this up so if you think about it right if i have like 10 pages 100 pages my plugins is gonna look pretty big right so what we want to do is we want to load all of our uh, html files and we basically we want to automate this process okay and the way we can do this is we can do this with glob so make const lob equals require glob. Let's comment these out and let's go here. So let's create a variable where we're ha gonna have HTML pages, right? And we can take glob, call the sync method. And then here we wanna spec specify the path to our pages. So it's gonna be dot slash SRC slash all dot html so that we're basically specifying something like a search string which we are going to use to grab a, uh, grab our html file so at this point let's just do console log html pages okay so you get an idea of what we're getting so npm run build and uh, here you can see our array of uh, of paths so let's grab one and we'll just use it as an example and then let's do map oh wrong place let's do map path okay and let's put a comment path example and this is what it's going to look like right so and now to just uh, to give you an idea of what a map does, it's almost like a for each loop, but a little a slight difference. But all you need to really know if you're not familiar with map is that it's for for each loop. So let's just do path replace dot html, and we want to replace it with an empty string. Okay, let's run build again here. And here you can see that we end up again with an array of strings, but this time all we're doing is we're removing .html from every element. Okay, 
so let's go ahead into our plugins let's grab one and we'll use it as a target of what we want to create so for each element we basically we want to return a new plugin okay and let's uncomment this and remove this comma okay and we basically just want to replace these uh, uh, what's it called um, these variables so first of all this template right here looks exactly like our path so let's just specify path here file name we really only want the index.html and here we want the index so we have a repeating pattern of index so really what we want to do is we want to get rid of the .html part and this path here so let's grab this and place another replace here paste it here and like that and let's call this chunk okay so we're going to be removing the .html first and then we're going to be removing the source horse part and we're going to end up with a chunk name that's going to sort of equate to this index or about and you can see where we can place it here instead of this index here and let's actually use string interpolation here so quite similar to C sharp we're just going to insert it like this and here we can just specify the chunk this way okay so after this let's do npm run build and see what we'll get okay so now you can see our array looks a little bit funky we have two html webpack webpack plugins in there and they're basically uh, they have some configuration so a lot of this is just uh, base configuration that we don't specify here but is still instantiated once this constructor is run so now we have the user html pages and we have this empty array here let's run concat and inside here we want to specify we want to input our html pages so concat all it does is it's a, a method on an array where you can take two arrays and combine them together into one so let's delete our dist folder let's run npm run build okay let's see dist and there we go we still have our two pages automatic scripts automatically injected goodness gracious this is magical Right, and let's, uh, if you want to keep these comments here, you can. I am gonna remove them. On the trackpad, so everything's hard today. And let's clear this as well. And I will remove this console log as well. Okay, this will be it for this episode, and uh, thanks for watching. If you like these episodes, don't forget to like, subscribe. Share it around, make sure other people can see these awesome tutorials that you enjoy it. Don't be selfish, share the knowledge. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm quite active with my comments and I like to answer your questions. And it actually allows me to double check on what I know. So as always, see you in the next episode.